didn't fake it, hot, sir. I guess I didn't make it. Get ready for me, love, cause I'm a cover. I simply gotta march my heart to drum and nobody go, nobody is gonna rain on me. Oh, hey. <laughs> Welcome to Daily Blast Live. I'm Tori, I'm in for Sam. That was Leah Michelle performing Don't Rain On My Parade at last night's Tony Awards. If you didn't know, I'm somewhat of a musical theater person. Ariana DeBose hosted the event again, but this year the show was unscripted because the writers are still on strike. Despite the hurdle, there were lots of memorable moments, including a historic moment when Alex Newell and Jay Harrison Gee became the first non-binary performers to win acting Tony Awards. Here's what Alex said. This my entire life, I should not be up here as a queer, non-binary, fat, black, little baby from Massachusetts. <laughs> and to anyone that thinks that they can't do it, I'm going to look you dead in your face that you can do anything you put your mind to. And again, I want to get their name right. It was Alex Newell. I wanted to make sure that is correct. What did you guys think of that brilliant speech? I mean, it's always so inspirational when you see someone who has worked their entire lives to get to this point and we get to see their moment. And it's, it's even more inspirational when they are the first to be it so others can see it. And that was an example of, of what that was last night. Do you know how scary it is if you can't see it? You, you told Eric, you say the th phrase. No, we'll leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> the phrase that Eric is so good to say, if you, you, know, when if I you first can saw that, see it, you can be it. Right. Yes, when I first saw that clip, I thought of so much about you. <laughs> and uh, uh, some of this is also on us as a, as a people in general, because we make this mistake every single year. Every single year, like American Idol, there'll be, you know, some uh, skinny guy that's got this huge voice. So it doesn't matter what the person looks like. There's just sometimes it's just inside talent. of people, this talent that is coming out. We keep going, well, they have to look like this. The talent inside of you doesn't know or care what you look like. And when we start to open up our field of vision to figure out that, like, we just want to see the best at what they do out there. I don't care what you look like. It's going to open up a whole new world. But in, we're going to find so many other people that feel like, well, I'm a, uh, you know, I, I look like this, so I can't be the best gospel singer. Don't get out there. Let's see what you got. You know, I, I wanted to be better based on talent, and we just saw some right there. There's amazing talent I, in that. I think Erica said it. Yeah. <laughs> I think we were done after that. Um, I did want to get to this. It's going viral. It's um, actress Danae Benton. She gave a little speech, and there has a moment that went very viral. I wondered if we could quickly play that. And while I am certain that the current Grand Wizard, I'm sorry, excuse me, governor of my home state of Florida <laughs> will be changing. <laughs> I just wanted to get people's thoughts on that. Yeah, I, Jeff. I could dive in, I guess. Here's my thing. I, it's Monday. I want to get to the Sean Hayes clip too because I'm very happy <laughs> with sure. him. Here's what I don't like about that comment. When you say a comment like that, you could say I don't like people's politics or I don't like what they represent, but to say Grand Wizard or to call someone Hitler, we're going too far. It's just, it's just too far. No matter what you think of the man, he's not a grand wizard. Horrific things happen to people from that organization to black people. Hitler killed thousands of people Millions. in a, in a horrific way. So to compare people to these monsters throughout our history is not a fair comparison. If I won an award and I said, Joe Biden's a pedophile because he has a video about his popcorn clip with his hairy legs, it's going to an extreme that you shouldn't go to. And these labels that we put on people these days are very harming. They're very damaging to a person's personality. And I understand how people feel about Ron DeSantis, and there's an argument the other way. But we have to reel it in when we go through these historic names like Hitler and compare someone to that, to well, that. Here's the issue, though, Jeff. Hitler wasn't born Hitler. Grandmasters weren't born grandmasters. The KKK gained so much steam and were effective at their oppression and dissemination of a race at certain points because no one said anything and they didn't say anything early. So when we have these moments where people are very boldly and bravely taking to a stance to say, if we don't know our history and we don't know the fact that 
these organizations didn't rise to power out of nowhere. You know, it didn't happen overnight. It happened because people felt like it was uncomfortable to speak out. They were fearful of speaking out. So these are moments of protest and they're moments of resistance. And that's what we're seeing. So I understand at this juncture, DeSantis is not a grand how, wizard. How many people did DeSantis murder? How many people? Jeff, I think the point that I'm making... I'm, I'm getting your point, uh, no, but I'm it's, saying it's I think we're taking it too because far. Because right now, DeSantis is responsible for a lot of legislation in order to contribute to the erasure of LGBTQIA plus people. That is dangerous. It's as dangerous as any historical erasure or dissemination of a people and in any context. And I get what you're saying. And so is this conversation for me, to be quite frank with you. I'm just making the comparison that he didn't murder anybody. When you bring LGBTQ in, in the black community, it looks like I'm trying to defend a racist. That's not what I'm doing here. I'm trying to say when people use an example of a horrific thing that happened in history, that's not what DeSantis is. I'm not defending DeSantis. I don't care what people think about him. I'm saying he is not that person. Yes. He is not that person and throughout history. And, and, and I think it's an easy applaud when you go up there and you label someone that because everyone in the room might feel the same way, but it's, it's very damaging to people. And, and that, let me jump in because I, you know, I'm listening to you guys talk and I appreciate being able to hear two friends have different opinions about a, a very touchy subject. I think my issue with that statement is just that here we are talking about Ron DeSantis when we should be celebrating this incredible moment. And I always ask myself when it comes to these politicians, a lot of them are actors and don't believe a word or live a word of what they say. Do they get every second of our lives? Like, do we always have when to talk about to... these every second, though, Tori? I, I, she had it's... a spotlight for a minute, I, and she decided to use that so that we're having this conversation. I, I, I get that. I get that. But it's like, they, I, I don't know. I just feel like it's sometimes there's a lot of people that she works with and she loved and a lot of great moments and anecdotes and people that drove her to play practice and people that stayed up all night going over lines. And they have a space in her life, too. And what it's going to do is it's going to trend and Ron DeSantis will have a tweet and it's going to be back in this disgusting spiral. Where we have to listen to this venom being spewed all over the place instead of hearing an incredible speech from these incredibly talented people that have to talk about these fake human beings. Your politicians are not real people in any way. But Al, they're making real laws and those real laws affect yes, real people yes, and there's need, suicides attached to But let's to get to people. why that that's happening and it's not just them. It's gerrymandering. There's a reason that they're, uh, the things that they're peddling are wildly unpopular, wildly unpopular, but they still pass because the way our country is set up, Wyoming can uh, cancel out California. So I don't want to hear anything about like, well, half the country, it's not. It's not even close. But because we're cutting up our country, these little fiefdoms, it looks like, oh, Lauren Bur Boebert, who's anti uh, uh, premarital sex at a 36 year old grandmother, she gets to have a lot of say. We have to talk about her instead of these incredibly talented people. I'm so tired of these and I'm with, corny people. That, it, no, the, and I'm with you. Yeah, I appreciate you saying I just, that. I just I think, want to hear from her and not talk about DeSantis for one minute, you know? But I get what she's saying, and I applaud her using her, her platform to do that. So I don't want that to be lost. Yeah. I think it's a great discussion, and then very fair. Sorry Let's to get in a gerrymandering. You see what y'all did? <laughs> but I think, I think some of your frustration is kind of like mine. It's gotten to a level where it's out of control now. Right. And if you try to defend one side or the other, I come off as racist and homophobic because I'm trying to Mickey defend someone nuanced. who doesn't need to be defended. I'm not for DeSantis or this situation. I'm just saying the, the labels that we put on people now stick with them, and it's very harmful, right? And I'm speaking from a person, from someone that has a label on them. Mm -hmm. Right, but Jeff, I I think that that's a false equivalency to, I understand where you're coming from right. and how it is personal to you, yes. but it's a very false equivalency for someone who is actively trying to remove labels in terms of identity mm -hmm. from people to be labeled. That's an energy thing. That's whatever you do will be done onto you. True. And I think that uh, having someone use one of their biggest moments right. is a very selfless thing, mm -hmm. actually, because uh, let me tell you, it is not really that fun when there's like backlash coming at you because you made a decision to stand up for the oppressed. You made a decision to use your platform, not for yourself, but for everyone that you can benefit. That is not like, you know, it's not a vacation. So anytime someone's strong enough to do that, 
and feels emboldened enough to do that for the greater good of a demographic that is completely marginalized and attempted to be erased, I'm going to applaud that because I understand how difficult that is. Yeah. So as opposed to like thinking about it as the moment and the labeling, I think it's almost like we're casting too broad of a net on labeling in general. There are some people who deserve and need to be labeled because they have an effect on our entire mm -hmm. country. So yeah, I hear, I think we're just, we could keep going in circles. I just think, Again, my, to label damaging. someone Hitler Words or Grandmaster, those are horrific things. And to think that your situation in 2023 is what people went through 150 years ago is, is I don't know, you tell me. It's Do you think yet. it's the same thing? It's yet. And now we have people who are speaking out. We have people who are marching in the streets. We have people who are actively protesting. We have the ability to understand that because we know our history, we're able to do something not to repeat it. And a part of that is getting very comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that is not easy to do. That's the best right. part about our show. Great conversation. Uh, Sean Hayes, this is a little palate cleanser, can also add Tony Award winner to his resume. The former Will and Grace star won for lead actor in a play for his role in Goodnight Oscar. During his acceptance speech, he showed his hubby some love. Take a look. Oh my God, this has got to be the first time an Oscar won a Tony. Um, <laughs> but I want to thank, um, I'm shaking. I can't believe this is so, so surreal. Um, first of all, my husband, Scotty, it's Scotty, right? Yeah. Uh, I never can get it right. Uh, uh, you are my purpose every single day of my life. Isn't that so cute? You knew about Scotty beforehand, right? Well, I watch um, Smart List, or I listen to the podcast, and I love it. And he always mentions Scotty. So it's, uh, if you don't know, it's Sean Hayes, uh, Will Arnett, and Jason Bateman. Hilarious podcast. But he's also like, hey, Scotty, guess who's on? So like when they have someone come on, he's like, oh, my God, Scotty's got to see this. So <laughs> it's nice to put a face to the name. And I've, I've been a fan of Sean Hayes and for yeah, so no, long. And Smart List now because cool. it's on Netflix, too. Yeah, yeah it is on Netflix. It's really blowing up. And uh, HBO. Yeah, I'm yeah. that black HBO, and white yeah. thing. Yes, yeah, yes. it's really blowing up. Smart List. Okay, I'll check it out.